listening to the Fantasy Wildcard Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Wildcard Dynasty Show. I'll be your host this week, Matt. You can follow me on Twitter at MattFFDynasty. And with me as always, I've got my two amazing co-hosts. First up, we've got Kev, who you can follow on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Go. Kev, how are you doing? Good evening, boys. I'm doing really well. Thank you very much. It feels like I've not been speaking to you forever. Um, in, in reality, it's about 10 days or so since the streamer phone we had, but... Yeah, it's felt like a long time since I've chatted with you boys, so looking forward to tonight's show. We've got a fast-paced world, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, and uh, yeah, the pressure's on. Absolutely, and before we get on to today's show, I'll bring on my other co-host, Ali, you can follow on Twitter, at FF Dynasty Grill. Ali, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, thank you, Matt. Yeah, good introduction there, Kev. It's been, it's been too long, lads, so I've been absolutely pumped for tonight's show. A bit of a different take we're doing. Yeah, startup strategy, so I can't wait for that. Um, yeah, feeling really good. Matt, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really, really well. Thanks, Ali. And like I mentioned, obviously, this is our first show since the amazing charity stream of fun that we did um, just 10 days ago. Um, a brilliant day. Um, I just start by, by thanking all the guests that came on. Obviously, it was a, a long day for us going for, for 16 hours, so it was great to have these amazing guests come on. Give us that little bit of energy when we needed it, when it got towards the end, because it, it was a bit of a struggle, but... Um, yeah, thank you to all the guests that came on, all the donations that we've had so far. Um, I think we're up to about 74% now of this target, so we're getting really close. And um, the donation page does stay open until until the end of June. So if you haven't donated and you do want to help us reach that target, um, you can still do that, and, and as I say, until until the end of June. Um, we're also going to be dropping the, the streams on our YouTube channel. The podcast is going to be coming out over the next four weeks as well. So if you wasn't able to catch any of it live, you can re-catch up on, as I say, on, on YouTube or with the, the podcast. And we've also got a really exciting giveaway to do, Kevin, in July. Do you want to let the listeners and, and the viewers know what, we, what we've got planned? Yeah, let, let's share the exciting news. Let's break the breaking news <laughs> to the to the listeners, I guess. So, yeah, I, um, we decided to do a, a giveaway as such. So anybody that's donating or donated before the end of June will be getting into a prize drawer as such. Um Several brands within the community have been really kind to provide a number of prizes to us, such as memberships, uh, Patreon access, roster reviews, um, all sorts of goodness. Um, now, the full details will emerge this week, the prizes that are available as well. But just thank you to everyone that's donated so far. Please do keep on donating. Uh, the, the link is on our Twitter page at Fancy Wildcard, the pinned tweet on there. So... Um, thank you for the donations. Keep donating for a chance to be in this giveaway, this prize draw. Um, thank you to the the brands for the amazing free prizes you've given as well as part of this stream of fundraising um, funds for Mind. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing seeing if we can reach our target by the end of June and uh, giving uh, plenty of prizes away in in the process. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a win win situation. Isn't it? Obviously, helping out at a, an amazing charity in, in mind, and then you have a chance of winning one of these amazing prizes as well. So, um, yeah, thank you again to, to all the brands that did do that. But without further ado, shall we uh, shall we crack on with today's show? Well, let's so, do it. Absolutely. On today's show, we're going to be completing our dynasty startup strategy show. So we're going to be outlining outlining um, how to tackle your startup drafts that, that and from the various different draft spots that you, you could be selected in so in in this one we, we've got kev who's, who's going to be talking through his strategy he was at the two spot and we've got ali who was picked at the six spot and then myself over at the 10 spot so before we kick things off let me pull up the draft board for anybody that is watching so they can they can see what what moves we made and whereabouts the the, the players fell but um, yeah, Kev, we'll, we'll kick things off straight to you. Obviously, as I said, you were you were at the two spot. So, yeah, just let the, the listeners and, and viewers know your approach to, to your, your startups and, and the moves that you, you look to make. Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, I had to fix it that I got a, a draft spot I wanted uh, when we were doing <laughs> the prep for the show. So, um wanted to sort of spread it out a little bit into the three quadrants, the, the first four, the middle four, and the last four. I think it's a similar strategy from... Uh, whichever spot you're in those particular quadrants. Uh, we decided to do it super flex PPR, start 10, no Titan premium. We did do the third round reverse on this one as well, so that changed it ever so slightly. Um, and, and we did the 20 man roster just for ease of time. So two spot for me. I think first off general, 
um, vibes, general prep for dynasty startups. First of all, is to get into tiers of your, your players and your positions so that, yeah, you know, when you come into the end of the tier, that's when you're going to get your values. I think second thing is understanding the format that you're in, the, the roster, uh, the number of roster spots you've got, the event spots, etc. That'll help you decide how you're going to attack it. And also, um, prep is to speak to your opponents, even for a draft starter. There's opportunities to potentially trade back. If you've been in leagues with these people before, you can get a gauge for what they're like and start talking, understand what they wanting to achieve if they want to move up or down, etc. I think ideal strategy for people selecting at the 102 or in this early sector. Um, my particular strategy, first of all, QB at, at pick two. Um, it's got to be your anchor QB. You can't be going anything else there in Superflex. Second pick, back end of the second, it's it's tied to two spots for me, either QB or wide receiver based on what's left of QB. I think in Superflex, I want to build around QBs. It's the cheapest way to, to, to purchase QB. If you're trying to buy them in the league after you start up, a lot of people will just ask for too much. So then you're left only with rookie drafts to add to that if you're struggling with trades. So do attack that in your, your startups. Pick three, again, depending on what you did at pick two, it could potentially be QB or any other position. And then uh, just with third round reversal, you've got to think, picking at the 102 with third round reversal, it's a late third. You're not really going to have the opportunity to take a top end QB at that spot. So that's something to consider. Sort of players I'm looking to target, I want the best QBs available. I quite like the second tier for running backs, sort of after that top five or six. I think there's some really good value there. People like Pollard, Stevenson, players like that. Any wide receiver I'm interested in. Tight end, I'm thinking Kelsey, Andrews, Pitts. After that, it gets very murky. So, yeah, top top, top three are darts. And then the other thing to consider, I think, from any spot is just the alternate strategy and force, a plan B. So I want to build around QB. If that goes wrong, I've got to be open to knowing my exit strategy. Is it a Kirk Cousins? Is it a Geno Smith? Is it getting a little bit wild with a Russell Wilson, etc.? So uh, that's one alternative strategy. I think another one you can potentially pivot to, uh, to a plan B is hitting two running backs early, seeing a lot of people fade in running backs because of the injury risk. But that is a viable opportunity to uh, mix it up and take real advantage of value. Yeah. yeah. So, shall I dive in from the sixth spot? Ooh, go for it. <laughs> yeah. So, my general pet for dynasty startups is it's pretty similar to Kev because Kev is a smart guy. It's <laughs> you're going to have to get your rankings or at the very least get your tiers sorted because I think it's incredibly difficult to enter startup drafts completely blind without any sort of rankings, any sort of tiers. <laughs> tiers are the most important in my eyes, um, rankings are secondary. Just get those sorted out before you enter into your startup drafts. Um, and then just get to know your format. Um, pretty simple, really. Get to know the rules, how many wide receivers you need to start, and blah, blah, blah. And then I think anyone, especially if it's not your first startup, you're going to have a few targets in mind that you want to get around of this area. So if you if you know roughly the ADPs, you're going to have some targets in mind. And don't be unrealistic. So from the sixth spot, I'm not going to have... Patrick Mahomes in mind, unless I'm desperate to trade up. So just be realistic with your targets. Um, and then if you do land your targets, you're feeling really good about it. Um, so that that's that. And then ideal strategy from the 106. Um, it's not the best position for me to be in. Um, I think I personally like to be on one of the one of the ends so I can almost double tap players. I think it's a lot easier to work out who's potentially going to fall to you. Always seems to be quite a weight when you slap bang in the middle for your next pick, unless you're moving up and down the board. Um, but ideally, I like to start with an elite quarterback in a super flex league. It speaks for itself, really. Um, at the 106, it's a bit more difficult because there's not six elite quarterbacks. or not in that top tier. I've got four. And then once the top four go off the board, you could potentially put um, a fifth one in there. Um, if they're all off the board, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick, a guy from the second tier from the 106 because I think personally puts yourself at a disadvantage already. Why are you taking a guy less or a worse guy than the guys in front of you? You're at a disadvantage already. So 
and want an elite elite quarterback. If I don't get that, I'm going to change position and get an advantage at another position. So ideally wide receiver, that's where I'm going to build my, my roster around um, at the minute. So it'd be quarterback or wide receiver. Second round, depending on whether I went quarterback or wide receiver, will be the opposite of that. Um, third round, again, if I can secure my second quarterback, that's that's ideal. Um, it sets up the draft where you can really put your feet up, you can relax. If a third quarterback falls to you, then, then happy days, but you're not reaching for one. And as as Kev mentioned, trying to buy a decent quarterback in Superflex is, is pretty impossible. So third round, I'm looking quarterback or I'm looking tight end because, as we all know, there's probably there's a tier of three at the top. Um, if you miss out on one of those three tight ends, again, you're possibly at a disadvantage, especially if you're trying to to win in year one. So it'd be court, quarterback or tight end in round three. Um, and then round four, again, it, it really depends on whether it's tight end premium, whether I reach for a tight end, um, if I didn't reach one in the third, um, or I go quarterback or wide receiver, depending on um, if I've only got one quarterback, um, or if there's a third quarterback that falls there, I'm quite happy to take that um, and then really pump the position for the rest of the draft. Um, so then just players or tiers to look at. Again, I really want an elite quarterback first. If the top top four or five, Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Barrow, and then probably Herbert in that tier as well, I'm going to move to an elite wide receiver. Um, personally, I'm looking to fade running back unless there's a value that I simply cannot ignore. Um, so I'm probably not touching running back in round one or round two. Then just alter alternate strategies. Really, you've got to stay stay water because a lot of people are fading runner backs. So you can zig when others zag. So if they're fading the running backs and they they fall to say round three, you can possibly trade up and get one. Or if one falls in your lap, happy days. Um, or there's the punt year one. I think if you're in the middle positions, you're going to miss out on the elite quarterbacks. Perhaps you can trade out of round one or com completely pick up say a second or a third or a fourth round pick and completely punt punt year one. Um, I like drafting Kyler Murray in round two. I think he's still an elite quarterback. Um, may not even play this year, so you may finish in a in a decent draft rookie draft spot come next year, um, where you can target one of those two elite quarterbacks in, in the rookie draft. So that's probably going to be my alternate strategy from the middle picks. <laughs> Love it, yeah. And then, like we mentioned, I was at the, the 10 spot, so a little bit similar to, to both of you guys. I don't want to repeat what you said, but the general prep does tend to be looking at the, the settings in, in your league, um, knowing well if it, if it's full PPR, tight premium, and all those kind of things. Any kind of maybe niche um, settings that, that maybe you don't see in, in other leagues, just, just something to, to keep an eye on before you head into to your draft. And, and obviously, the, the roster constructions as well, how many flex spots and how many wide receivers, start, wide receivers you have to start and everything like that. Then, like you guys mentioned, checking my rankings, making sure they're all up to date, sorting the tiers out, knowing that I've got those solid tiers that, that allows me to move around the draft board if I need to and, and stick within those tiers and, and gain value where possible. And another thing I like to do is, is look at other ADPs. Obviously, a lot of our drafts are, are on sleep, and, and we know sometimes that the sleeper ADP does get a little bit of a rep for maybe a little bit skewed with, with certain players. So I do like to, to look at things like keep trade cut. I know it's not a, a site a lot of people are, are overly impressed with at times, but it is a, a crowdsourced website, so we do know it's, it's what a lot of people are using. It's up to date quite often. Obviously, DLF as well, that, that's a, a great brand that, that bring out monthly ADPs as well, just to, to get a feel of really of, of where people are going and not just sticking to, to what the sleep ADP is saying because it doesn't always fall that way. So that's the, the things I like to do before I enter my draft. And then my ideal strategy from, from the 110 spot or, or the later end of, of drafts is, I think with, with these kind of spots for me, I'm always looking to, to double tap quarterback. If you're getting those, I mean, where I'm at, I'm getting two picks in, in the top 15 and, and you know full well at least two wide receivers are going in those 15 picks, if not three. So potentially getting two top 12 quarterbacks down for me, I think that's a really solid strategy. Like I mentioned, you, you know how hard it is to get these elite quarterbacks um, once you're, you're in season. So I think locking in two solid quarterbacks is something I'm always looking to to do. There's the, the possibility, obviously, if one of, of Jefferson or Chase does slip to the 10 spot, then you start asking a question or, or taking a wide receiver. I think with it being third round reversal as well, I think that allows you that little bit of flexibility as well because obviously you're going to get an early pick in the third round. So if you do miss out on getting two quarterbacks at the start, you're still getting quite an early pick in that third round to, to select possibly a top 16 quarterback. So 
Um, I do potentially like that kind of move if one of the, the wide receiver does fault here. Um, but, but usually, as I say, I, I tend to go quarterback, quarterback where possible and just shore up that position and get the elite options. Um, so, yeah, I think for, for me, you've got to take two quarterbacks in those first three picks. I like to build a, a really solid core of wide receivers, so I do tend to, to go wide receivers with the, the next couple of picks where possible. Um, and then another thing as well that I always like to bear in mind is making a decision early on what I wanted to do with this roster. I don't like to to start and think, right, I'm going for a win-now approach and then kind of fade away from it and, and start going younger and, and mixing it up. I like to, if I, if I know where my roster's heading, I like to make that decision early and then think, right, I need to start targeting some some veterans if I'm liking how it's starting. I think I'm in a position to to win now. Maybe I will reach a little bit higher for, for some win-now pieces. So um, that's something I like to do. And then just an alternative strategy is, obviously, Bijan's going to be a big talking point going early, potentially in, in the first round. So could you maybe start with Bijan at, at the 110, locking that, that cornerstone running back that, that's obviously fresh into the league? You've got, hopefully, that longevity at running back. And then attack other positions like quarterbacks, maybe even go for an elite tight end as well. As I mentioned, with that third round reversal, you can get one of these top tier tight ends, which gives you that positional advantage. Um, so I do like that approach as well. Um, yeah, I think if you can get Lamar Jackson, maybe at the 110, Mark Andrews sitting there at the start of the third, that's quite a nice way to start your, your draft. So yeah, just a, a few different ways that I might approach it. But like Ali mentioned, I think the, the common theme is obviously stay fluid, stay water and, make the moves where, where needed because you, you don't know do we, we think we like to know how things that are, are going to fall in these drafts but but you never know the, the way that they fall so yeah staying fluid is, is definitely a, a great piece of advice but with that boys should we, should we start breaking down these picks why we we made the selections we made obviously everyone's looking at this draft board and they were thinking why did you take that guy there so we'll, we'll give us reasonings for that and kev obviously you had the, the second overall pick so let us know what was your, your thinking behind the, the selection. Yeah, I mean, first off, for, first pick was Josh Allen, but this guy I'm picking at the 102 would have been my pick if I had the 101. So um, I'm not a homer, but I'm taking Jalen Hurts here. I think if it's um, any league that's getting any uh, additional bonus points for passing touchdowns, long pass plays, I'm leaning my homes because I think on a passing level, the only person – Coming to mind, it gets close to him. You've got your, your Burrow and your Herbert there. They're the two from a passing point of view that can, can sort of potentially get close, but not in his, his tier. With Hertz, I just think he's got a, an unknown ceiling in fantasy in terms of he has the best ever season. He can have that's going to, in my eyes, eclipse what Lamar Jackson did a few years back. So really interested with that. I think as well with Hertz, you've got some really interesting young stack options as well. So, um, He's the guy I would have took at 101. I don't have a lot of him because I faded him when he was a value a few years back at QB16 when it was a big risk. But, yeah, I think in, in, a, in a league of this format, I'm really happy taking this uh, this pick of Hurts. Yeah, definitely. And then, Ali, obviously, it went to you at the, the, the 106. The, the quarterback run carried on, as you would expect, with Mahomes, Burrow and, and Herbert. So what was you thinking behind your selection here? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I want to try and get advantages where I can. So um, it is obviously super flex. Ideally, I want to secure that long-term quarterback that, that can be elite. Um, but with, with Justin Herbert, that's the last guy I've got in that top elite group. Um, so I'm going to fade the position. I've got the three quarterbacks that went shortly afterwards, Fields, Jackson and Trevor Lawrence. Um, I feel like either of those would be a good option, but you're still there a tier down from the, the five guys above. Um, so I feel like I'd be at a disadvantage. So I'm just going to go for the premium guy, the guy that's going to score like a, a quarterback anyway over the next several years in, in Justin Jefferson. Get the number one wide receiver nailed down. We we start starting three wide receivers in, in this format. So it's absolutely, absolutely key that you get some elite guys in there. I'm ha really happy with the pick. He's going to be a guy that's going to dominate for the next eight, ten years. Um, yeah, really secure, really happy with that. Knowing that the chances are I'm going to still get a really decent quarterback in the second round. Um, and yeah, I've got an advantage over everybody at the wide receiver position in, in picking Jefferson. Yeah, absolutely. We know how impossible it is to, to trade for Justin Jefferson. So I feel like that's where you've got to get him. So um, yeah, I love that pick. And then, as I mentioned at the top, I like to go quarterback early. So with the, the 110 spot, 
I did have Trevor Lawrence sitting there. I really wanted to, to get Lamar Jackson because I think he's a guy that, that we're all getting quite excited about for, for this upcoming year and, and in Dynasty. But locking in Trevor Lawrence just gave me that that solid quarterback, as I mentioned at, at the top of the show. I like to to get those elite quarterbacks. And while I don't think he's quite got the ceiling of obviously the guys that have gone before him, I do still think that, I mean, we know how great he is. We, we all spoke about it when he came into the NFL, his, his college production and, and what he was as a prospect. And he's finally managed to show that this past season. So I feel like I'm locking in a, a really safe QB one there with with Trevor Lawrence, um, obviously an offense that is continuing to improve, that they're adding weapons around him. Um, so yeah, I think he's a, he's a great pick. Might not have the, the elite ceiling, but he's a guy that I feel like I can rely on for throughout the, the whole of my dynasty league for however long it lasts. So um, yeah, really happy with that. And then again, as I mentioned, I, I do like to go QB, QB where possible. And I mean, Deshaun Watson's still sitting there at, in the second round for me. I had to take Deshaun Watson and, and give myself that, that second quarterback. Um, it would have been tempted if, if like a CD Lamb fell for me, obviously he went the pick after me, then AJ Brown, Brees Hall and, and Bijan Robinson. So I was quite lucky in, in the fact that no other quarterback went after that pick of, of Trevor Lawrence. So Again, being able to talk into Sean Watson, another guy that I think is going to take a step forward. Obviously, last season was was kind of a getting back on track season for him for, for the games that he did play towards the back end of the season. So a little glimpse, didn't we, in, in that last game as well. So I think he can make a, a real bounce back this year. And as I say, just locking in two elite quarterbacks for me is is a way I love to start my drafts in Superflex. Just kind of a, a set and forget kind of move there at quarterback and allow myself to, to be more fluid for, for the rest of my picks. So... Ali, we went back to, to you at the, the 207. What was your, your reasons behind this pick? Yeah, so maybe people think this might be a little bit early, but Anthony Richardson is the pick at 27. Steal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I absolutely love doing a draft, uh, a startup before the NFL draft because I managed to get Anthony Richardson in the, the back of the sixth round. Well, that's impossible yeah. now. You, he's a second round quarterback now, and he's the sort of the last guy where. I really want him as my quarterback one. He's already ranked as a quarterback one in Dynasty. Um, you've got the quarterbacks next to, uh, of Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Bryce Young, the next on the list. And I'd feel a bit uneasy at those being your quarterback one, unless you were going to punt, um, obviously, with Kyler Murray. Uh, but Anthony Richardson is a guy that has got an incredibly safe floor with the Russian that he's going to bring. I think he has the ability to get from a, a back-end quarterback one to about probably where the, the second tier, Justin Fields, the, the Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, in 12 months' time, he could be in that tier too. And I want to get him at this this value. I think you have to take him now. You have to take a chance on him. Um, and I feel really good about getting two two young studs on my team in Jefferson and Richardson. Um, and I can play any way I want going forward. So I feel really good about these two guys locked in. I've got my quarterback and I've got my wide receiver. So it gives me a bit more flexibility with with my next pick. Yeah, and Kevin at the two eleven. I mean, you said that you weren't a homer with your first pick, and I think you, you kind of proved it with this this second pick in the second <laughs> round. Yeah, I kept it in the East. That like you, you know what I mentioned at the start about QBs. I want to be tagging them early where I can, and um, that's probably the last guy in the in in my tier as such that I was looking for him or Kyle Murray were the the main guys I was targeting. So to to take that Prescott at two eleven, I was really happy with that start. I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see in a little bit of time, but it's, it, it proved to be the right decision from a QB point of view because it's, it does get pretty pretty barren after that. So, yeah, taking Dak, I think the Cowboys pass more this coming season with, uh, with losing Zeke. Now, he might be back, we never know, but I think as it stands with that running back room, with Pollard coming off an injury, they've got to pass more rather than give 15 touches to Ronald Jones or Malik Davis. So, um yeah, really happy with Dak, keep it in the NFC East. And then, yeah, third round reversal means I, I don't get to pick again soon, but it swings back to you, Matt. Yeah, so like we mentioned, obviously, it would be in third round reversal. It gives me that little bit more flexibility at the, at the top of the draft. But with me taking those those two quarter packs, I could kind of have my pick of the bunch wherever I wanted to go running back, wide receiver. But as I did say at the top, I, I do like to get that solid core of wide receivers and managed to get Garrett Wilson here at the, the 303. And, Again, this is just another guy that obviously there's a lot of hype around in this offseason. The addition of Aaron Rodgers as well to, to the Jets is only going to emphasize that. But just giving me an, a, a young 
wide receiver, that a real cornerstone piece at the wide receiver position, a guy that I think can can definitely take step forwards. And and who knows, in in a twelve months time, this could be a guy that could be going at, at the end of the first round, maybe even pushing up even higher. Um, we, we've seen what he did as a as a rookie with a, an absolute mess at a quarterback. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love that Garrett Wilson at, at the start of the third round getting that side wide receiver and a guy that I think could potentially gain in value from from what I got here. So um, yeah, really happy to, to get Garrett Wilson there. Mm-hmm. Tyreek Hill went just before as well. So feel for me getting that younger guy that's just a solid cornerstone piece that I can I can build around that should gain value. But even if things didn't play out. Um, this season, I still think he's going to maintain that value because of his age and because of what we saw from him as a rookie as well. So, just felt like a really solid pick with with upside as well. So, with that, Ali, we went over to you in the third round, and um, kind of following my suit a little bit with this this selection, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, um, going back to my strategy, I'm trying to nail down either another quarterback or another wide receiver. Um, Travis Kelsey's gone a couple of picks before me, so um, Kelsey's off the board. Um, so, yeah, going with the theme of having your rankings and having your tiers, more importantly, um, I've, I've got a wide receiver here in Chris Alave that is at the, the bottom of my tier three. So um, extremely happy to get a guy still in, in this tier where you pick Garrett Wilson, who's also in that tier. Um, yeah, incredibly happy. The, the quarterback situation is a little bit more murky. I think there's a big tier break from the Bryce Young down to you've got CJ Stroud. But then after that, you're looking at the likes of Tua, You've got people that uh, Trey Lance, you've got quarterbacks with question marks on. So I'm just going to take a guy that had an incredibly good rookie season in Chris Alave that, that can build on that now with Derek Carr um, to nail down two top or top eight wide receivers for me in Dynasty and and a, and a young quarterback in Richardson with the with the Konami code. Yes, yeah, so it's a great way to start the draft. And I feel really good that I can get two two elite wide receivers nailed down. Yeah, definitely. And now, Kev, at the 311. You've obviously taken an eagle. You've then pivoted to a cowboy. How do how do you round off those two picks with your your pick in the third round? I mean, you've got to keep it FC East, baby. It's got to be it's got to be a giant, and it's a it's a, a little bit towards Paris Campbell. So um, it, had, it had to be safe on at this spot. I just feel that running backs. I like I like Saquon. I like Jacobs in this area. I think. There is an argument to be made that maybe Pollard, Stevenson, guys like that could potentially be in that same tier, but I know you're a massive fan, Matt. I think I'll probably trade him to you in season. But, um, <laughs> but I, just, I just think that ceiling-wise, if if he hits like we know he can, it, it's mega. It's right up there with McCaffrey. So, yeah, I feel I feel confident in this pick at the 311 because there was a, a couple of wide receivers I was really happy about. So, I thought if I take Saquon here, it's very, very likely I get another one on the way back and in particular i was thinking about the stack obviously i think stacks give you that big advantage if, you, if you're taking hurts in the early first you're not going to be getting aj brown at the at the back of the second so the primary stack i was looking for was Devonte smith which if you had a season better than aj brown i wouldn't be shocked got him at the 4-2 i like the stack i like the age i think um there's a lot of potential there the fact that yeah there is a bit of concern we've got it coming back but I expect her to be passing a ton this season I think playing from behind is going to happen a lot more I think tough schedule uh, alludes to that as well so give me the the Hurt Smith stack again NFC player keeping on brand the question is when will I pick a commanders player <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll have to wait and see but Ali obviously it comes to you at the the four six and I'll be honest I love this pick when you made it definitely a guy that I had my hand hopefully falling to me but um yeah Mark Andrews what a pick yeah, so I mean, at this stage, I've only got one quarterback, so my eyes were definitely on a quarterback here. Um, but then, if I can't find a quarterback, then it's definitely best next best player available. And luckily for me, my tight end one was was still here. We're all about getting advantages where you can, um, and I feel like I'm going to have an advantage over everybody else because selecting Mark Andrews, a guy that had a, a down year last year from an unbelievable 2021. Um, yeah, it, it just fell to me here. You've got to take the value when when it falls to you. Um, again, we, we're trying to get the advantage over the other the other eleven league mates. Um, so yeah, I'm incredibly happy to lock in one of the top three tight ends. That means I'm I'm happy to to leave the position alone for a good free round and concentrate on maybe another dart throw later on in the draft. And it gives me much more flexibility to hit quarterback 
running back and wide receiver in the next few rounds. Um, so yeah, just just take that value with with Andrews. Yeah, definitely think it's great value. Like I mentioned at the, the top, if I was able to get Lamar Jackson with my, my one ten, I wouldn't have been against taking Andrews at the the three three. So to, to get him at that point in the draft was a, a great pick. And as I say, guy that I had my arm for for the four ten, but sadly you you sniped me there with that one. But I then decided to, to pivot on to Devontae Adams now. I now mentioned at the top, kind of making my decision if I want to go win now or or maybe uh, productive sugar to start with. Obviously, I've taken Garrett Wilson, but I feel like he's still a guy that can produce you know, in this upcoming season. So I felt like just getting myself a, a locked in wide receiver that's going to produce this year. I know obviously the, the incoming Jimmy Garoppolo can maybe make things a little bit more muddied now with Devontae Adams, obviously playing with Derek Carr last year and that change at quarterback. We, we never really know how things are going to play out with, with new quarterback playing Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not really somebody that he'd class as a a high tier quarterback, let's say, for, for producing fantasy numbers for, for his wide receiver. But I just feel like Devontae Adams, what he's done over, over the last few years, the last four or five years, has, has been incredible. That move after going to, to the Raiders and still putting up the numbers with Derek Carr gave him that little bit more reassurance that even with Jimmy Garoppolo, I still think that the talent is going to shine through there at the Raiders. He's still going to be the top option in, in that offence. And just giving myself a, another solid wide receiver that that can produce points for me. He could easily be a, a top five wide receiver again this this upcoming season. And so to be able to get him in the, the fourth round felt like a, a great move. And then, as I say, taking that that aging veteran, a guy that feels like a win now kind of move. I then decided I was going to take a running back at this point and, and really push on that win now move. And Tony Pollard at the, the five three. We know he's obviously staying with the Cowboys now. Hopefully now he's equal. It doesn't look like he's, he's coming back to the Cowboys after after they released him. So at this moment in time, it looks like Tony Pollard's in for, for a big share of this backfield. But I think even if Ezekiel it was still there, I still feel like Pollard was was becoming the, the RB1 in, in this backfield. Kev mentioned about the, the Dak Prescott and maybe the, maybe the, they are looking to, to run the ball a little bit more. It's obviously been a, a big part of their game um, last season. So having Tony Pollard being the, the RB1 in, in this backfield really feels like a, a win now move taking him at, at this point in the draft. I feel like he's his value is at, at probably its highest it's ever been. Um, but I'm still happy to take him here and, and get that locked in RB1. Um, and I wouldn't even be too scared. I think we mentioned this on the stream. I think even if the Cowboys brought somebody in, I wouldn't be too worried and feel like I was going to lose value because I feel like that could potentially be good for Pollard and, and giving them little bits of breaks and being able to use that explosive enough that he's got. So, um, yeah, really happy to, to get a turn Pollard here in, in the fifth round. And then I'll leave back to, to you with your fifth round pick. Yeah, so at the five seven, um, still probably a little bit early for me for running back. Um, the, the elite guys have gone off the board. Looking at secondary guys now, um, I've already got my tight end one in Mark Andrews, so really not got to think about that. Um, and it's it's about securing my second quarterback because I've got Anthony Richardson. That yeah, he's he's got a a high floor for maybe the the first couple of years, but it, if he doesn't um become a, a good passing quarterback as well, he's not not going to be in the league too long so he's there's a little bit of risk there so i need to secure my second quarterback position and um, we go for kirk cousins and um, it was a toss up between cousins and, and daniel jones um the tear break or the difference in being that i've obviously got justin jefferson there so that stack is is a really productive one kirk cousins finished as a as a quarterback one last year i've got no real concern with kirk cousins for this year i think he's going to be easily a quarterback one again um the the Minnesota defense has is, is got worse. I think Kirk Cousins is going to have to pass an absolute ton again this year. Um, so to have a to get Cousins in the middle of the fifth round, that I think is going to finish as a solid quarterback one, and then the the ceiling of Anthony Richardson that feels like a good a good pairing to um, to put together um, and feel good about having two solid quarterbacks. I've not got two elite quarterbacks, but I've got one potential and one safe quarterback. So yeah, I feel I feel really good about that pick. Yeah, absolutely. And that leads on quite nicely, Kev, to, to your selection at the 5-11. Yeah, this is an interesting area of the draft mix. I think uh, you see a lot of teams attacking wide receiver and looking at the wide receivers available, there's plenty of options, lots of young options, some safe, some a little bit risky. So I want to try and get a pair which uh, give me a bit of both, a bit of a bit of floor, a bit of ceiling. So first pick I went for Addison, Jordan Addison, um, Take away the mega stack from Ali. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's not why I was doing it, because I think just try and focus on yourself in these drafts. But um, re really enticing guy. I think personally, I'd rather have him than roll a dice on Jerry Udy or um, 
a DJ more, someone that's had a bit of time in the league and not really shown as the full uh, potential. I think he's going to get a lot of favourable looks opposite Jefferson. Um, so he was the safe pick at the at the five eleven and six two. I want to get something a little bit different, bit bit of an intriguing upside. There is guys that was on the board like Pickens, like Jameson Williams, like say Flowers, which people could say we don't know what they could be. They could be extreme, extremely uh, superb dynasty assets. But one guy that we've been banging on the drill, I think all of us like this guy, and he's had mentions for Fantasy Wild Cards and. Um, breakout potentially is Traylon Burks, the, the main man uh, in Tennessee. Obviously, there's QB concerns, but I think that helps get him at a really good price here. I think if everything hits for him, I still see top five wide receiver in his range of outcomes. I think, um, yeah, I just really love the profile coming out. I'm not giving up yet. It did, it did show flashes. He got a lot of bad injury luck. Com- having him with Smith and Addison, I'm happy to take a bit of a stab at someone a little bit more riskier in there. Sort of bolster that wide receiver go. Yeah, absolutely. And then Ali went over to you with with your pick in in the sixth round. Yeah, so I didn't really want to go running back with this pick, but um, there was certainly a wide receiver run before me with some guys that I would have took. That's and me. going back. <laughs> cheers, Kev. Going back to tears, you got the likes of Pittman, Addison, Julian Burks that I'd have at the the, the bottom of one tier. So I wasn't going to reach into the next tier. Um, so I'll go for a, a runner back that I still feel really good about for this year in, in J.K. Dobbins, um, a guy that hasn't hasn't quite put it all together yet for fantasy, um, not not stayed healthy, um, but I think he's in for a really good year this year with the, the Baltimore Ravens, loading up the wide receiver core. It'd be interesting to see how they they use their running backs. Um, but yeah, I feel really good about Dobbins for this year. I think he still holds holds good value and was at the top of my my tier. That um, yeah, I, I feel good about him here as sort of. Bit of an anchor running back, but on the cheap. Um, and uh, again, I haven't got to think about running back again unless unless value falls to me, which which is what has happened here in J.K. Dobbins. The value's there, so I want to pick him up. Yeah, then I was a little bit like yourself, Ali, with this six-round pick. I was looking at wide receiver, but then a string of wide receivers went before me after your selection, Zay Flowers, DJ Moore, and, and Chris Godwin, which was the painful one for me because he's a guy that I've still got in my top 20 wide receivers and, and a guy I'd love to pick up here at the at the, the six ten, but instead, I kind of stayed on brand a little bit. I, th- I thought there's, there's still a Titan sitting there that I think may be a little bit undervalued and and should be going at this point. But I think maybe a lot of people wouldn't have, have taken it at this point. But I went for Dallas got it at the, the six ten. As I say, he's a, he's a guy that I've been on for, for quite a while, and I know it's obviously a bit of a crowded room over with the, the Eagles. But we know Jalen has took a huge step forward as a as a passer, and, and when you actually look at the the points per game for, for Dallas got it. He is right up there with the, the top four or five tight ends. I know his, his overall finishing points never look quite as, as good as the points per game because he does struggle with injuries occasionally. But I still think if he stays up for a full season, he's a guy that could get into that range like a, a TJ Hawkinson and where he's going at this moment in time. So I feel like getting him at this point, locking in a, a solid tight end, probably the last guy for me um, within that tier of tight ends before it gets to the range where I'm kind of just punting the the position at tight end so yeah happy to, to lock in a, a tight end with that pick and then back to me again at the 7-3 went back to my wide receivers and another young guy in Jahan Dotson who's getting a lot of hype this offseason um, obviously the, the quarterback situation wasn't improved and uh, we was all hoping that maybe the, the commanders could look at quarterback but I mean, you know, I'm, I still love myself a bit somehow. So if he's a starting quarterback, <laughs> I'm not overly weird. And I feel like Jahan Dotson, when he, he did play last season, obviously had the hamstring injury in, in the middle of the season. But when he was on the field, the guy looks, the guy looks great. And I feel like he's becoming a bit of the, the forgotten man out of that wide receiver class because of the, the greatness that, that a few of the other wide receivers have, have done at the top end. So for me, he feels like a guy that can definitely take a jump forward. I think he could potentially be the wide receiver one on this offense in front of Terry McLaurin as soon as next year as well. So being able to, to get him in the seventh round felt like really solid value to me. So Ali, back to you with the 7-7 seven, seven pick. Yeah, it still hurts that you picked Dotson because I really wanted him <laughs> as my wide receiver three. I would have been feeling so good about it. Um, but no, I went went for Brandon Ayuk, a guy that I've got ranked wide receiver 21. So I think he's the wide receiver one on, on the 49 as a high-powered offense. I feel really good about getting almost three in my top, 20 wide receivers um, and him to be my third wide receiver. I feel really good about that. Um, I think he takes a step forward past Debo Samuel again in, in 2023. Um, yeah, so I feel really good that uh, I've got three top, almost top 
20 wide receivers um, to anchor the, my my roster. I feel really good. Is is at a good age. I think he's still still some growth to come. I think he could p- potentially be valued a little bit higher in dynasty than he is this this time this this off season. Um, so yeah, I feel really good about getting Ayuk as my my third wide receiver. Yeah, and then Kev over to you at the, the 7-11 spot. This is a player that I could potentially knock it on the door for. Oh. Obviously, having Deshaun Watson. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Amari Cooper at, at the 7-11. Love this pick. Yeah, I think it, it, we've taken those three younger wide receivers early in, Devontae Smith, Addison and Burks. It kind of leaves it open for you to attack any age wide receiver to round out that core. Um, I think if you're taking guys like Hill, Adams, etc., early on, You've kind of you're edging towards that way of I need to compete, or if you take uh, like a Kelsey or something, you've kind kind of got to compete straight away. So um, the free free wide receivers that I had earlier make makes it sort of gives you more flexibility. So I took Cooper at seven eleven. I think if Watson gets back to Watson, we're very happy with that. And then at the eight two, I took Deontay Johnson again. I think he's still the one in that offense. I can't see that changing anytime soon. He's got the most horrific QB on earth, but <laughs> we'll we'll overlook that either. The target machine is going to be getting circa 10 targets a game. So, um, he's really talented. I'll just bank on that he gets more than zero touchdowns this season to to really uh, <laughs> hit the heights as my as my wide receiver five. I think that's a safe bet to make, to be honest. I'd be, I'd be shocked if it if it's it repeated itself again this year. But Ali, over to you at the, the eight six spot locking in your, your QB three. Yeah, so it's all about finding finding the value at this point of the draft. Um and to to get the, the quarterback five from last year at this point in the middle of the eighth round, I think it's great value in Geno Smith. Um obviously we we don't know officially that Anthony Richardson's gonna be the starting quarterback. We we obviously think he's gonna be. Um, but Junior Smith is a guy that's just got an elite wide receiver, another another weapon. He's got three incredible wide receivers there. I think he's going to be really productive this year. So to take Junior Smith as my third quarterback, again, whatever plays out, I don't have to start Junior Smith in my, my lineup. I could eventually I could trade him away for value, but the, the value's here to take Geno Smith. So the guy that was obviously received a, a contract this offseason, um, I feel, feel really good about him as my quarterback three and now really can forget about the, the position um, and just feel really good about the three quarterbacks that I've got. Yeah, absolutely. And then I followed suit with, with my pick at the 8-10, locking in my QB3 as well, taking Derek Carr. The guy that we, we always mention, just a, a safe as I was a quarterback, he's, he's not got that huge ceiling, but he's got a real safe floor. And obviously when it comes to, to bye weeks and I need that safe quarterback, I think you don't get much safer than, than Derek Carr. And I think the move to the Saints could potentially hopefully unlock a little bit more of a ceiling that we've, we've yet to see. Obviously we know how exciting Chris Olave has looked and if Michael Thomas comes back and kind of is anything like it, it was um, a few years ago before the injury. I just feel like that Saints offense is... It's going to be pretty good for, for Derek Carr. So just a felt good locking in a, a QB3 at this point. This is a kind of range where I'm looking to, to grab my QB3 anyway. So I was happy to take Derek Carr there and then swinging it around to, to the 903. Went again for, for a running back, Miles Sanders, um, locking him in as my, my RB2. Obviously, we know he's now gone over to, to the Panthers. And I think he's, he's now lined himself up for a great opportunity for being the, the starting running back for the Panthers. Obviously, bringing in a, a rookie quarterback, I feel like they're going to want to lean on on the running game. And Miles Sanders has obviously shown flashes with the the Eagles, and I just feel like the opportunity is there for him to to be a solid RB two in in fantasy, and he's potentially got that little bit of a ceiling as well because we know how efficient he, is. he has been when given the opportunity with the, the the Eagles, and maybe he can have a little bit more of a look in the, the receiving game. So obviously, he's not quite had that um, with the Eagles. So I think going over to the Panthers with a rookie quarterback. Um, yeah, could unlock a little bit of a ceiling that we've yet to see from Al Sanders. So happy to lock him in as my, my RB2 at that range. And then Ali, over to you at the, the 907. Yeah, I'm still a bit bitter that Devin A. Chain went a pick before <laughs> me because he would have been the guy that I smashed in at, at this pick. But I've gone for James Cook at the 97, a guy that I don't actually like in Dynasty, but everybody <laughs> everybody seems seems to get excited about this offseason. So it, it's just about values. It's like playing playing the stock market almost, I'm taking a valuable piece that, again, I'd probably end up trading away before the start of the season if someone offered me the right the right amount. It, perhaps someone's taken a guy that, that I liked um, and, and I can use James Cook as a piece to, to trade for that guy. So he's locked in at my RB2. 
think there is potential for, for James Cook. I don't personally personally see it, but um, again, I could use him to, to trade away um, and, and get someone that I do really like. Yeah, that was the, the typical Ali trademark of I'll get a share just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like it for Dyson, but I'll, I'll get a share just in case. <laughs> and then Kev, over to, to you at the, the 9-11 spot. Yeah, it's brother love, isn't it, with you? You've been called Cook and he's been called Cook. <laughs> brother love. But, um, yeah, I guess keeping it on the on the love theme, I, I went for Jordan Love here. I think with having Hurts and Prescott as my, my sort of mega um, QB uh, room, it felt that uh, for my QB3, rather than play it safe and maybe go for a Matt Jones or a, uh, Sam Howell or someone like that or an Aaron Rodgers that I really want to shoot for upside. I want to shoot for someone that's got the high ceiling. Uh, someone like a Trey Lance would have been nice, but he went well, about round one or something. But um, <laughs> I, I just think Jordan Lovey is that he's an unknown and he's got a dual for upside. We've seen flashes. Let's throw a dart at this stage. He's a starting QB. He's got Konami upside. He was a pick at the uh, at the the nine one one, and I guess. If he's uh, hitting it off, then he can better call the cops because his team's amazing. <laughs> um, and then swinging it back to the 10 2, Rashad Bateman. I, I mean, I've got my starting wide receivers. I'm still missing a running back two. I'm missing a tight end one. But I just felt the value at this stage to get a wide receiver six. It means I have to mess about rostering scrub wide receivers like Terrace Marshall, et cetera, later on. I could just. Focus on this core of six wide receivers. It's a twenty-man roster, so maybe I'll just roll with roll with the six and um, use the rest of the roster spots wisely when it comes to it. Thought it were a big value here. Yeah, absolutely. And then Ali, over to you at the, the ten oh six, locking in the guy that I know you're you're really excited about for this upcoming season. Yeah, so continuing the theme of of value picks, really, and an upside, and then it feels like this is the point of the draft where it's, it's get your guy. Um, I've nailed down three starting wide, wide receivers. Um, I can see with your pick, it's a guy that you like. So I'm just going to lock in Marvin Mims, a guy that I'm happy to take in. Sort of the middle, perhaps early second round in rookie drafts, a guy that I think Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos offense are excited to use. Um, there's certainly a lot of upside there if one of those other two wide receivers um, are traded out of town. I think Marvin Mims is a, is a great great asset to have, especially as my wide receiver four. Um and, and feel really good about it. I think there's a lot of upside with this pick. Um, so I think the value's there, and it's a guy that I root for, so definitely happy to to pick him now. Yeah, and again, I kind of followed suit with the 10-10 the ten, ten selection for me going for Rishi Rice. Um, I mean, we, we talk about where Sky Moore was going the, the year before, so to be able to get Rishi Rice in the, the back end of the 10th round felt good to me, a guy that I liked pre-NFL draft, so I'm not I'm not all about the, the Chiefs landing spot as, as a reason why I'm, I'm high on him, but um, yeah, I just like the opportunity there potentially with the with the Chiefs on a, a great offense, obviously tied to it to a great quarterback. So I felt like getting a young wide receiver here um, was was good value. And then with the eleven oh three spot, kind of did the the reverse of that and went for Juju Smith Schuster, a solid veteran who's now gone over to to the Patriots. I think he's landing in a great situation, especially in PPR leagues where he can take that Jacoby Myers role in the in the slot, see plenty of targets from from Matt Jones and be a safety blanket. So. Just felt like a solid depth piece for me at wide receiver, a guy that, that should have a safe floor in terms of PPR and probably a safe floor than he actually had with the, with the Chiefs, um, given that role that he's now going to have with the, with the Patriots. So, yeah, double tap wide receiver there. And then, Ali, back to you with the 11 07 pick. Yes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't always go for a, a fourth quarterback this early on, but I think the value's there for Brock Purdy just because he's, he's injured right now. There's a lot of question marks. But I personally think is that the 49ers quarterback one going forward. So I think this is a pick that you make and will immediately increase in value once he sees the field again. And the fact that I've got Ayuk, so I've got a bit of a stack going on there. Um, and again, it's a piece that, that I hold, I think is going to increase in value. So I can either roster him or I can help, I can trade away um, Purdy and in increase that in a different position, perhaps a runner back that, um, that I'm interested in later on. So um, yeah, to get, to get Purdy, I think is a good value play. Yeah, definitely. And then Kev, to you at the 11-11 spot. Yeah, NFC East, bingo card, <laughs> full house here. We've got, we've got a commander's player on somehow. Um, Antonio Gibson, I think, running back two. If we said this a year or two years ago, you'd be very happy to get Antonio Gibson as you're running back two. So um, where he's going here is big fire. I think there is potential bounce back. The enemies there is a new OC. 
if things don't work out this season, he'll be a free agent. There's hope that he can get a good move on to another team and really show um, the, the talent they had in these first two seasons where he finished as a top, running, uh, top third team running back twice. Um, so that, that was a position of need. Obviously, my bench is going to be full running backs as well. But back to the 12 2. Um, tight end, that's another spot that I was missing. I think um, I got absolutely sniped on David and Joe for the 12 1, which <laughs> despite me having Cooper, I'd have been happy to, to roster them both. But uh, Greg Dolchich is a guy that had a great rookie season. Uh, he missed, missed the first part through injury, came in, it set the world on fire in a, in a terrible, terrible offense, terrible play calling. Um, finished, I think. On a game to game basis, round that tight end, top top 12 tight end numbers. And the community's fading him. He's got Sean Payton uh, and he's getting faded. So I'm not quite sure that that adds up. He's someone that I'm really interested in to see what he can be. Payton's got career years out of guys like Jared Cook, etc. So open for similar with uh, a young dude in Greg Dolchich. Yeah. And then Ali at the 12 06, sticking with that theme of, of getting your guy, I guess, with this pick. Yeah, Rayshon Johnson is just about finding value now. I'm a bit bit weak at running back position, um, but I would have taken any position if if the value's there. And I just feel like Rayshon Johnson has has the chance to to end up as the the running back one towards the end of this season. So I think again, it's a value pick where I can pick him now and potentially trade him away for for more 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 value in the future. Um, yeah, and this get your guy um, and a good value pick. Yeah, definitely. And then for me at the the twelve ten, um, I just went a little bit against what I was thinking I was going to do. But I had a kind of a big tier of wide receivers that I was happy to target in this range. So I thought I'd pivot a little bit. Went for a young tight end, Sam Laporta, another guy that's, that's getting plenty of hype now after the NFL draft. And obviously, I know I took Dallas Scott at the top, but I feel like locking in another young tight end that that could potentially gain in value as early as year one with with this Detroit offense. Um, yeah, just felt like a a good value at this point in the draft and getting the tight end too, that kind of meant I didn't have to worry too much about the, the dark throws later on in the draft. So, um, yeah, happy to get him here at the, the 12 spot. So, Kev, we'll come to you for now, a quick run through of your picks from round 13 through to, to 20 and a uh, quick reasoning of, of why you made the picks you made. Yeah, so at this stage, I've I've got my full lineup of 10. I've got my QB3 in, in love um, and that extra wide receiver mentioned in Bateman. So, I think my, my philosophy in the last... Sort of six, seven rounds or whatever many rounds it is in drafts is just how a running back and hopefully when the injuries hit, you've got the right guy. It's a lot of pot luck. A lot, there's not a lot of skill involved. I, I feel you've just got to get lucky with the right injuries, the right spots, etc. cetera. Um, obviously, uh, Dulcich was my tight end one pick. I need to get a bit more solid at that spot because it's an area I'm going to be weaker than everyone else. If Dulcich doesn't pan out, what's my plan B? So I took McBride in, in round 13, Trey McBride. Um, it's potentially a bad offense, but at the end of the day, it, I feel that he's a great prospect. He's coming into year two. It was hard to judge him on his rookie season with injuries, with, um, with no Kyler Murray for a big part of it. So that's one thing, uh, one guy that I like. Second tight end I took in round 18, Juwan Johnson. Absolute sleeper. What a stud. Uh, very excited to see him in the... Uh, I'm going to make the boring comp, the Darren Waller role with Derek Carr. So really excited for that. Loads of running backs. So Damien Harris, Tuba Hubbard, Jalen Warren, James Robinson, Pierre Strong. Again, not a lot of skill involved for those picks, just a case of hoping you hit the right guy. Maybe Damien Harris falls into 10, 15 touchdowns in Buffalo. I did take one more wide receiver. I said I wasn't going to, but I did. Um, Tyler Boyd, I think where he was going in round 15, I'll take a stab on potentially the third guy in in, in, a, in a Bengals offense there. So that was that was my uh, my structure: three QBs, I think uh, six running backs, uh, seven running backs, seven wide receivers, three tight ends. Nice and symmetrical, just how I like it. <laughs> Love it. And Ali, over to you for for the reasons why you rounded out the, the back end of the draft the way that you did. Yeah, so just looking for value upside, potential assets that I can. I can move on, probably not looking to start these guys, but um, I've, I've already got four quarterbacks, so I won't be touching those. Um, I've got one elite tight end, so t- um, I'm really happy to get Chica Conquo um, as my tight end too. I think we all know the incredible upside and everyone's talking about Chig for, for 2023. Um, and then uh, similarly to Kev, I'm looking to, to hammer running back the last few picks and 
just hope that there's some injuries where I'm going to get some starters out of. So I've got P Ryan, who could be an early an early starting running back that I could potentially sell early on early on in the season. Uh, Jerick McKinnon, a guy that was absolutely smashing it for fantasy at the end of last season, re-signed again to the Chiefs. So what sort of role is he going to have? But if it's similar, then I've smashed it in round 17. Um, Sean Tucker, because I've got to get a Buccaneer in there. Um, <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Wilson, because he's in the starting mix for, for Miami. Um, and then Gus Edwards as well, uh, a guy that looks that always looks great when starting. I've got J.K. Dobbins, so it's a little bit of insurance there. Um, and then in terms of a couple of wide receivers late on um, to round out my six. Uh, Rondell Moore, I think there's plenty of upside there in, in Arizona, especially now Newt Hopkins has moved on. Um, and then Michael Gallup as well, someone that I've always liked. And then in, in the middle of the 16th round, I think there's value, especially this perhaps as an injury to C.D. Lamb. I think there's a potential open there for, for Gallup to, to be productive. Yeah, love it. And then for me, the, the the way I rounded out my draft, obviously I've got my my three quarterbacks. I never really need to, to go quarterback. I've got my my solid tight end in Dallas Goddard and then a young tight end in, in Sam Laporte. So it kind of gave me the, the freedom to just attack wide receiver and running back. Obviously, I've only got two running backs at, at this point in the draft when we got to the 13th round. So I had to prioritise some running backs later on in the draft, but took Brandon Cooks in the 13th round just to get another solid bet guy. Um, DJ Chark a little bit later on as well. Again, another guy that could have opportunity. And um, with the Panthers, and then a couple of rookies as well took Tank Tank Dell later on, and then Pukunuku right at the end because obviously I've got to stay on brand and, and take Pukunuku with my my last pick. But as I mentioned, also needed to target the running back position. So again, why not stay on brand? Take a bit of Zach Evans in in the fourteenth round, potential opportunity there with the with the Rams, and then Michelle Penny, another guy that could potentially have an opportunity with the Eagles. Hopefully he can stay healthy, but if he does, I feel like he's going to be the the, the lead running back, the, the guy that's going to be down for, for the first and second down. So I um, was really happy to, to grab him there. Jerome Ford, a guy that I really liked, the prospect coming in and potential opportunity with the with the Browns and Raheem Mostert just because of that backfield. We know it can be fantasy gold if, if all plays out well. So, um, yeah, I was, was really happy to, to round out the drafts that way I did. And to be honest, boys, I think we've smashed that, to be honest. So um, with that... Yeah, that brings us to, to the end of our show where we've obviously completed a dynasty startup strategy. I told you a little bit of the picks we made, why we made them. But um, yeah, overall, I think, um, I think we did pretty well there, lads. Yeah, the only thing I want to add from like, my point of view on this is um, if I'm going to be weak at any spot in on my teams, it's it's running back two. And if it's not yeah. running back two, it's fading tight end. So that, that's the only bit hard. Or to Ellie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more on fading running backs completely this off season. <laughs> Focusing on them wide receivers, I've seen a bit of a change, and wide receivers are so much more valuable now in in dynasty, and they hold their value as well. Um, so happy to to tap that position early and early and often, um, and yeah, get grab an elite tight end or fade completely. Yeah, love it, and I think we all did that kind of thing, didn't we? Of staying fluid. Obviously, you have to make adjustments here. You go in with a a strategy but you do have to be able to, to make the adjustments obviously there's a few snaps that we spoke about there but we was able to to amend it because we, we did stay fluid and obviously knew we could attack draft later on and one thing that i will touch upon is i didn't make no stacks in in this draft and at the end of it i was kind of disappointed that i didn't make no stacks but i do think in dynasty is it really a necessity in, in your startups i feel like you've got the ability to to make the trade so kev as i mentioned you've got amari cooper if this was a league and, uh, I've been knocking on your door. I'm sure we could work something out for for Amari Cooper, but yeah, I just thought that was a, a fun thing to add. But yeah, with that, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to follow us and subscribe on on Twitter and YouTube at Fancy Wildcard and at Wildcard Dynasty. Join us for our show every Tuesday in June. Um, we're we're going to be dropping the, the stream for episodes as well um, daily, Wednesday to, to Saturday, so four a week. So as I say, if you did miss any of the streamathon. You will be able to, to catch up on it as a, a pod and on a stream as well on on uh, YouTube. So thank you once again. Have a good one and we'll see you again soon.